Today we're back on the super frustrating choosing beggar subreddit, ready for an absolute adventure and I hope you guys are too. I woke up today and I chose frustration, ready to get annoyed by some choosing beggars and with that being said, enjoy guys. My friend's son is selling their Pokemon cards and this happened. Graded Pokemon cards. Yes, are you interested? Yeah, can I get them for free? My son has been looking for some. Are you stupid? <laughs> Such a beautiful and concise response. I feel like that needs to be used on so many more choosing beggars. It completely sums up the situation. Quick question, are you stupid? Hey buddy, have you lost your mind? My family owns a small moving company. It seems like even when we do everything right, we're still wrong. P.S. All of our 50 plus reviews are 5 stars except for this one. Three stars. I'm not sure why the ratings are so high on these guys. Yes, they scheduled me quickly after paying $25 fee to get them to my house, but they did the small amount of work I had to move. They were here less than 30 minutes and I was at $175. No moving people are worth this amount of money for such a short job. Yes, they came quickly. Yes, they did what I asked, but at a high cost. Next time I'll be looking for someone more reasonable. Thank you for your feedback, Laurie. It sounds like you had an overall good experience and that's what matters the most. We're sorry you feel our prices are a bit high, but we're a legal, licensed and insured moving company, and we pride ourselves on paying the movers a fair wage. We frankly couldn't afford to stay open if we lowered them anymore. We do try to always make it clear that you'll be paying ahead of your move date, as all of our prices can be found on our website and our ads that we place. We hope you can understand. Happy New Year. This is like the definition of you get what you pay for. Like, yeah, they were a little bit more expensive, but they did do a great job. So what's the issue here? A $30,000 vehicle for three grand isn't too much to ask, is it? This is opposed to those of you with abundance. I'm a long-term local. I'm looking to buy a car or a truck. Again, this is to those of abundance. People with three or more vehicles. I know you only use one or two at a time. The price of a vehicle is overwhelming. I can afford the payments, but then I'm broke. So I'm hoping maybe somebody with a thirty dollars or $40,000 car will sell me one outright for cheap. I have a parking spot to keep it. I have gas money for days. Looking for around two or three grand. That's all I'm willing to spend total. Three thousand cash in hand for title of running vehicle worth 30,000 plus. What? I have so little in life. I'm trying so hard. I deserve it. I'm worth it. Help me out. Yeah, the people who bought the car probably deserve it too. God bless. Good karma. Live long and prosper. It's only collecting dust in your collection. Give it to the needy. I'll only use it a quarter of my life. I love choosing beggars. They'll ask for pretty much anything. Yeah, look, I know it's a bit of a stretch to ask for a $40,000 car from somebody and only pay them 3,000, but Hey, it's worth a shot. A Lenovo laptop. 350. 600 and you can have it. It's a good price. 400 please. Not for me. Give me free. Please. Please give me. Yeah, sure. Just tell me where you live and I'll be there in 20 minutes. I live here. Should I also pay you for taking it from me? So they wouldn't take 400, but for some reason they feel like they're going to give it to them for free. What do you think the chances of that are if they didn't take 400? Like they're either so delusional or they're joking. You can't be serious saying stuff like this. So just... Joe made a comment about us being registered at places for our 10 year anniversary. We actually are not. However, we're accepting gift cards to places, Target, NFM, wall to wall wine restaurants, etc. We are definitely not joking either. People accept gifts of all sorts of crap. Why can't we for our 10 year? Remember, we're not traditional. What did you just say? <laughs> I'm so confused. What was any of this? You're accepting gifts for your 10 year anniversary? Like as if it was their wedding or something? And because they're not traditional, traditional, you should send them stuff for their anniversary. Yeah, like tomorrow's a Sunday, so can you send me presents? No, and that's such a weird thing to put on Facebook and to set up like a gift registry thing at shops for this. And we are definitely not joking either. Are you sure? This one is called free cans. I drink a lot of seltzer in cans. I also know that a lot of people collect cans for a little extra money. I'm too lazy for that, but I don't mind helping someone get that money. Honestly, it makes me feel good to know that I help someone have a better day. So I stomp the cans and I put Put them in grocery store bags. Then I put them in a kitchen size bag on the porch. When it's full, I write free cans on the bag and then I put it on the corner. It's usually gone within 15 to 20 minutes. On Sunday, I put the bag out and not long after, a guy rang my doorbell. Next time you put out cans, take them out of those grocery bags before you put them out. They're a pain to deal with. I told him that he wouldn't have to deal with that anymore. That even if I have to sit on my porch and wait for someone to pick up those cans, I'll make sure that that someone isn't him. I mean it too. I'm petty enough to sit out there. How are you? 
you're gonna complain about what is essentially free money? Edit to add, and I check they accept cans my weight here. P A U S A. They either don't realize how rude they're being, or they just don't care. Either way, that's so frustrating. Like, yeah, what are you talking about? They're free. And next time, can you also deliver them to my house? Woman tries to get a free MacBook from me, and then asks if I have a husband and is he handsome? My native language is not English, so sorry for any mistakes in advance. The situation is still very fresh, and I'm giggling while typing it. This happened a couple of hours ago. I decided to put my almost unused MacBook Air for sale. Literally one minute after posting the listing, I get a call. It was 11.15pm and most people usually are asleep at this time. I pick up the phone and maintain a very calm tone during the whole call. Hello? Woman? So tell me. Me? Confused? Who's calling? Woman? It's me. Unknown name and surname? I'm calling because I saw a computer for sale. Me? Oh, I just didn't expect someone to call so soon because I listed it just now. Woman? My granddaughter told me that I need to buy a computer with an apple. Me? Yes, it's an apple computer. Just like what you're looking for. Woman? Where do you live? I tell her my city and the district. She tells me her town and it's on the other end of the country. She doesn't know my city at all. So I suggest that she travels here by train and I'll meet her at the train station. So it'll be simpler to her. She says that's perfect and then asks me if I won't scam her. I tell her that I only want to sell my laptop. Why would I scam you? Then she asks me for the price. Woman? So is the final price 900? Me? Well, I listed it for 800 and do you have an offer? Instead of an offer, I get a story from her that she wants to buy this laptop for her granddaughter. Then a short pause. Woman? Maybe you would donate the laptop. Me? No, because the price of the product is too high that I could give it for free. Woman? Do you have a husband? Me? Yeah. Woman? Let me talk to him. Me? My husband's not related to the sale of the laptop. Woman? Give the phone to your husband. I'll talk to him. He'll give me the laptop for 200 Me? Ma'am, this computer belongs to me, not my husband. And because of that, I make decisions regarding the sale of it, not him. Woman? Is he handsome? Me? This is not related to the sale. Woman? What? Me? This is not related to the sale. Woman, almost crying, starts to beg me to let her talk to my husband, that she just wants to give a gift to her granddaughter, etc. Ma'am, have a good evening. I hung up the phone and instantly blocked her number. I was a little bit scared because the longer I listened to her, the more I understood that she was mentally unstable, and I was afraid that she'll write something bad about the thing I'm selling, just to retaliate because I hung up on her. I told my husband what happened, and he told me, yeah, we should stay at least a 300 kilometer radius away from people like her. And we were laughing because that's how far the town she lives is from us. I then texted my friend who was not sleeping, and she asked, what was the deal with her asking for your husband? And I answered, maybe she was hoping to seduce him with her pensioner spells and make his heart fall for her. Then she could have the laptop for dirt cheap. But she failed this time, so she should try putting her wild panther spells on other men who sell laptops. We had a good laugh about it too. It just made it easier to think about my temporary customer service job, because no matter how rude the clients are, none of them are this crazy. And that's good. Yeah, I feel like in the future, they're not going to be putting their phone number on there. I didn't even realize you could have your phone number on Facebook. So what, people on Facebook can just call you? That sounds awful. 250 for a switch. Hi, is this available? Yes, it is. Is it broken? It isn't broken. The connection for one of the Joy-Cons is a little loose. It still works. Then get it fixed for 100 I don't have the money readily available. That's why I'm selling it. Why don't you buy a new one? Look, do you want it or not? I want a new one. Then go buy a new one instead of scrounging through Facebook for a used one. Yeah, that's just confusing. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm fully aware that this is a used Nintendo Switch and I know it's not going to suddenly become a new one, but I'm still going to bother you about it. Why? <laughs> Maybe if I pestered them enough, it'll suddenly become a new one. I'm wanting to buy a PlayStation 5 ASAP for my son. I'd like it to be brand new or used, but like new without any damage and the digital version. Wanting to spend 400 or less. That's AUD as well. As you can buy them new in so-and-so for around that price. No, you cannot. <laughs> Please private message me if you have one or know someone who does and wants to sell one. Thank you. You want a brand new PlayStation 5 for 400 Australian dollars because you can get one for pretty much that price from somebody else? Why don't you buy that one then if you can get it for that price? Oh, wait a second. Because you can't. If I Google PS5, it comes up at $799. Pretty much everywhere in Australia anyway. I feel like if they could get one for around 400 somewhere, they probably would and they wouldn't be asking on Facebook. Listen, I can buy it for this much somewhere else, so you should probably sell yours to me for that price. Does this strategy ever work? Does anyone have a huge smart TV that I could borrow for the next year or two? Wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the next year or two or like 10 years or 15 
15 years or maybe even 25 years. Anybody got a Lamborghini I can borrow for like 45 years? Like, you're gonna give it back, right? No, I get the feeling that they're not gonna give it back and they'll quote-unquote borrow it for long enough where the person forgets about it. Like, hey, I lent you that TV two years ago. No, you did not. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Who borrows a TV for two years? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like they're not gonna give it back. How do you handle someone being really pushy about a project? Someone at work wants me to make them a quilt and with the fabric she wants and all the materials when it's all said and done, with the labor, it's gonna be like an $800 quilt. I told her what it would be and she said that's way too much so I politely told her that's what it would be and I can't do it for free. I thought that was the end of the conversation until today when she asked me when her quilt would be done. One, I didn't agree to do it and two, no money has exchanged hands. I really don't wanna do the quilt because I don't believe I'd be paid for the work and I honestly feel like if she gave me a deposit, she'd stiff me on the rest and she was adamant that the cost was too high and mentioned how much cheaper Walmart is also. Any advice? Probably don't do it. There's no way that they'll pay you the full amount for this. And why do they feel like that you can give them the same quilt but charge them so much less? Like, yeah, your quote was way too high. So can you still make it for me for less money? No, goodbye. Anyone got free food to get rid of? Car broke down, had to get it fixed and no money to get food now. Hello? Hello? Hi, happy to help out. I can bank transfer you a 20. I'm just out right now, so I can't go to the shops. Can you transfer me at least 50? My fridge is empty. 20 is really about all I can spare right now. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Can you pay ID me? Yeah, what's your pay ID? Done. Hope it helps. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hey, everything okay? Yeah, sort of need some money for dessert. Wow. <laughs> That's so bad. So the original bit that we read was a post in a group that they're in. I feel like you got to post the screenshot somehow so that they don't do this to other people. Because otherwise, surely they're going to do this to other people. Like, yeah, I know you did a super nice thing that you didn't need to do and I should be super grateful. But can you send me more money, please? No, okay. Guy tries to convince me that my mattress is a different size. I was moving and I listed a full-size mattress on Facebook Marketplace for like 50 bucks. It was maybe six months old and I bought it for 200. I kept a memory foam mattress topper on it so the mattress was in brand new condition. A guy messages, says that he wants it and will come right away. He arrives and inspects it for like a solid five minutes. He was thinking hard with arms crossed and fingers stroking his chin. He then tells me, this is not a full bed. This is definitely a twin size bed. I tell him, no, it's a full. He then tries to convince me it's a twin sized mattress and then offers me $20. I tell him I'm not taking 20 and he's shocked that I'm not accepting his offer. He's like, I drove all this way here and you're really not going to sell it to me. I was getting the feeling that he did this often and I told him to leave. Huffing and puffing, he left without the mattress. Even though I wanted to get rid of the mattress ASAP, he wasn't fooling me with his tactics. Edit, this got a bit more attention than expected. So I wanted to add one more detail. I completely forgot this memory and I remembered it only this morning when I was flipping the mattress topper. This happened back in 2018. As the day has gone on and I've giggled at this encounter even more, I realized I forgot one big detail. This man actually brought his own measuring tape and measured the mattress himself. I remember him pulling out his own measuring tape and kneeling down to measure, but I must have left the room as I don't remember watching him measure it. Even with that, he tried to convince me that it was a twin. I'd slept on a twin mattress for 22 years. This was the first full bed that I've ever owned and I was super excited about it. There was no way in hell it was a twin. He had a super thick African accent. I don't know if he thought he was slick but my mum didn't raise no fool and his scheme wasn't working on me. Good on you for not selling it to them because they obviously do that all the time. Like, oh, it looks like this is actually different than what you said. So I'm gonna totally lowball you and not give you the full amount. Give me your lunch or else. I'm not sure if this will fit here so if it doesn't, please let me know. To start my tale, I need to let all of you know that I love, love, love to cook. I'm a great cook and I cook from scratch daily. This is pertinent to the story. Years ago, I worked in an office with about 40 other people. I was asked daily what I'd brought for lunch and I would bring extras from time to time to share. I'd often get asked if they could have a taste. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. It depended on how much I'd brought that day and how much I liked the colleague. One fine day, a certain co-worker approached me in the break room and says, that smells great. I'll give you my bologna and mayonnaise sandwich if you give me your lunch. I said, no, thank you. And she just kept standing there glaring at me. I said something along the lines of, we good? She mumbled something and stomped off. This woman was always mad, so I didn't give it enough a thought. A few hours later, I got a call saying that the district manager needed to talk to me in his office. I go in and we pass some pleasantries, and then he asked me what happened in the break room today. I'd already forgotten about the incident, so I said, I don't know, what happened? You tell me. This woman had filed a complaint with HR calling it racial discrimination because I wouldn't give her my lunch. What the hell? 
seriously. I tell my side and I explain that I didn't like her lunch. Her race wasn't even on my radar. She was lazy, bitter and entitled and I have no problem saying I didn't like her at all. Eventually she got called in to tell her side of the story. She goes on about how I get home cooked meals every day. She didn't know how to cook and I was clearly discriminating against her when I said no. She deserves my lunch. Huh? Now the manager and her are both staring at me. I take a moment to gather my thoughts and I said, I hate mayonnaise, I hate bologna even more. And nowhere is there a policy stating I have to give my lunch to someone who asked for it. We all stared at each other for a few minutes before I was sent back to my desk without a write up lol. Yeah, what? Oh, you get home cooked meals every day. They cook for themselves, how entitled. Yeah, that's unbelievable. How didn't the district manager laugh at this? Like, sorry, what? Are we children here or something? You can't just get upset because somebody isn't gonna give you their lunch. And that goes without saying, doesn't it? Help needed. I need a free photographer this weekend. I'm renting a room out in my home and I need decent pictures of it. Again, this is a non-paying project slash collaboration. I'm looking online and seeing photographers charging up to $500 a session and I'm not being ripped off. Sorry, but shooting five pictures is not worth that. Now what you will get is referrals for more paying jobs in the future. I work for a client's real estate company that will get you exposure to clients in the future. Also, if anyone's interested in renting the room, it's $1,400 monthly, utilities not included, has a shared bathroom and access to a kitchen, etc. Message me if interested in any of this. But yeah, just because you feel like a photographer isn't worth paying doesn't mean that that's true. And yeah, you're taking photos for somewhere that you're going to put up for rent. Take the photos with your phone or somebody else's phone or something. So confusing. No good deed goes unpunished. Fridge edition. I was visiting some friends and helping in the kitchen and I realized that their fridge wasn't great. All the shelves were broken, so everything was stored in a perilous game of Tetris on top of the crisper at the bottom of the fridge. I asked about it and they said they couldn't afford a new fridge at the moment. I offered to go to a local hardware store and buy mesh shelves and see if they'd fit, but they waved me off and said that they had a plan. Not my problem, so I let them pack their fridge and did the dishes instead. And this is when I should have erased this problem from my memory, but I'm a helpful idiot. A month later, a different friend was moving to a different city and trying to get rid of their fridge. I asked if they were selling it and they said no. They were happy to give it away as long as it was picked up. I contacted the first friends and I asked if they wanted the fridge. They said yes. Both parties knew of each other, so I made sure they had each other's numbers and let them make a plan between them. The following week, I hear from both parties. People with the bad fridge are upset that the mover won't pay for transport and because the fridge was quote unquote too old. Never mind that it had all of its shelves and it was working just fine. Mover is upset because they were counting on the bad fridge people picking up the fridge and is upset with me because the deal fell through. Never mind that I wasn't even involved in the negotiations on when and how collection would be done. And everyone is angry with me because I didn't sold out transport between the two. How exactly is this my issue? And that's the last time I tried to play matchmaker. Yeah, wow, well, I knew it was going to be a frustrating episode when I started this, but I never really realized how frustrating it's going to be. The ones that have the bad fridge are completely in the wrong here. And yeah, I feel like it's the last time you're going to try and help them with something. And yeah, that's enough for today. I enjoyed reading the Choosing Beggars today and it was super fun. But also, that's enough. Time for something super wholesome. What's one thing that your partner doesn't know? When we watch movies together, we always snack. One of our favorites to munch on during the movie are the Sour Punch Bites. She takes all the blue ones because I don't like them and they're her favorite. Always says how lucky she is that it worked out like that. The blue ones are also my favorite, but she can have them. Oh, that's so cute. These are by far my favorite, but I'd rather see you happy. Hey, Jeff, you see my magic hat yet? How is it magic? Just watch. Goes down a manhole. Is this part of it? Huh? Jeff, falling down the manhole was not part of my plan. In truth, the hat was not magic. The manhole, however, was. It time traveled me back to 1932, where I became stuck. Still, I married a girl called Betty, and I lived happily. I hope you do too. And then they see them all grown up around the corner. Interesting. Wait, so they're related? Am I a moron? What's going on here? And also, is it wholesome? Everyone in the comments are saying that it's also that Doctor Who episode with the weeping angels. Wait, so is he Jeff's grandpa? Okay, I'm moving on. Today was a difficult day, said Pooh. There was a pause. Do you want to talk about it? Asked Piglet. No, said Pooh, after a bit. No, I don't think I do. That's okay, said Piglet, and he came and sat beside his friend. What are you doing? Asked Pooh. Nothing, really, said Piglet. Only I know what difficult days are like. I quite often don't feel like talking about it on my difficult days either. But goodness, continued Piglet. Difficult days are so much easier when you know you've got someone there for you. And I'll always be there for you, Pooh. And as Pooh sat there working through in his head his difficult day, while the solid, reliable Piglet sat next to him quietly swinging his little legs, he 
He thought that his best friend had never been more right. Oh, that's so beautiful. And that's a really good place to end the episode. Hell yeah, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. And hell yeah, everybody for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time today and I hope that wasn't too frustrating. If you enjoyed and you want to see more Choosing Beggar videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to that one YouTuber fan, 6900. It's really nice to watch a Vincey video after a bunch of drama and true crime. It's like a nice palate cleanser, you know? Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. That's how I want the episodes to feel. Light-hearted and fun. Not something that's going to make you stressed out or angry or something. So yeah, thank you. That means a lot. And yeah, guys, thank you for watching once again. It means so much to me. Today's episode was an adventure and I've got another adventure planned for tomorrow. And I hope to see you then. As always, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!